Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my recap of season one, episode nine of She's Gotta Have It. Nola says 2016 was a messed up year. She goes on to recount all of the major black figures that passed away. There's Muhammad Ali, Afidi Shakur, Natalie Cole, Prince, and too many more important figures to name. As tribute, Nola goes to a series of cemeteries to honor all the black ancestors. This is what I love about Spike Lee movies. You can complain about the dialogue, you can complain about the character development, but nobody in film is gonna honor black folk the way Spike Lee does. Spike Lee will honor your obscure ass. There were people's names on the screen that I'd never heard of. I had to jot them down and go look them up. People I didn't have any clue were buried in Brooklyn. Were, you're here? There's a neighborhood meeting that's being led by Bianca, the whitest white woman ever to white. Someone's been defacing the brownstones with a neon green G for gentrification. It also looks suspiciously like the logo for the G train, which runs through Fort Greene. Bianca is doing the most. Bianca thinks Papo is behind the vandalism. Everyone's like, Papo would never do that. Even Nola's white housemate, I think she lives on the first floor of the brownstone. Even she was like, nah, Papo? The meeting turns from that into complete chaos. Nola says black lives matter. Bianca starts in with a white lives matter. Somebody says all lives matter. Nola's mom says the people that live in Fort Greene have to figure out a way to coexist. The black folks who are still there aren't going anywhere. White people are gonna continue to come, but this kind of chaos that they're carrying on today can't continue. Nola goes to see Dr. Jameson. Dr. Jameson points out to Nola that she's carrying a lot. Obviously, there's her art, there's her financial situation, which is pretty unsteady. There's the bad review. Nola's really concerned about her future as an artist. Her greatest fear is that she's gonna end up like Papo. She asks Nola, do you think you'd be able to concentrate more on yourself if you didn't have so much going on in your life, namely the three men plus Opal, that you're always juggling. Nola admits that sometimes she mixes up the guys' names, but she says she's never mixed up their energies. And she goes on to explain the different things that she likes about each man. Despite what she said in an earlier episode about Jamie not reminding her of her father, she describes him here as a nurturing parent. Dr. Jameson points out that each of her three men make the ideal guy, which is something I've always pointed out, but it's like an aha moment for her. Dr. Jameson also goes back to the art opening, which Nola clearly doesn't want to discuss because of the bad review. She points out that Nola was more focused on her men than she was on her art. She says, what if you didn't focus on them? What if you only focused on you? I kind of wonder what exactly has Nola been telling Dr. Jameson about the men in her life? Nola in general seems very unbothered. When her men get on her nerves, she just stops speaking to them. I never really thought Nola was really that caught up in her men. Dr. Jameson suggests to Nola that instead of trying to put out all the fires with her guys, that she just let them burn. It's very Ayanla. Later, Nola goes by to school to teach the kids. Reggie, Nola's favorite, is on her phone and Nola gets upset and Reggie's like, no, but you're in my phone. Apparently she's following some high-end art page, which I was like, really, is that what we're doing at 12? Maybe Nola had the kids follow certain pages on Instagram, but Reggie's like, yo, you're on this page and you have like a bunch of likes. The post is talking about Nola's street campaign. Nola completely flips out. She leaves the classroom, she heads straight to Corinda's gallery, and she's like, WTF, how could you put this out there? Corinda is like, I put this out there because Mars told me. I told you she was going to dime out Mars the first opportunity she got. I saw your art. I think it's amazing. People are really into it. It's got 50,000 likes, and I just launched your career. You should be saying thank you. Honestly, Nola should. All season, Nola's been talking about, I want Oprah and Jay-Z to buy my work and I want $100,000. And Clorinda is like, Lenny Kravitz called. He's interested in your work. Nola is going full Nova from Queen Sugar. You just gotta put on to the main stage without any real effort on your part to get there. What's the problem? This is a very 20 something concept. You wanna earn respect, you wanna you know, struggle and hustle. If you don't have to scrape and struggle, don't. People do it because they have to, not because they actually want to. If they had an easy way to get around it, they would. You got one take it. Nola's not at all grateful to Clorinda because she was like, I didn't ask you to do this. Like, I don't have to say thank you. Clorinda just did you a huge solid, ma'am. She didn't have to do that. Clorinda brings up Mars of all people. Ma'am, you got to let it go. Mars is with Nola now. I know that was your bestie. She says at some point that she asked for permission. You said it was okay. If you didn't think it was okay, then you should have said something at the time. If you're not cool with that situation, then you need to stop being friends with Nola, period. 
Nola meets up with Mars and pulls the same mess with him. She was like, I didn't want you to tell her. I told you not to tell her. That was a secret and you spilled. And Mars was like, I did. And I did it in your best interest. And things are working out for you. What is the problem? Nola's like, Rawr! Mars is like, I'm sorry, bygones. And she tells Mars, you know, I think this has been a good run, but I don't think we should do this anymore. Mars is devastated. And to make it worse, Nola calls him Mr. Child. She's confusing him with Greer. He tries to talk Nola out of this decision. Nola was like, nope. She opens up her laptop, puts on her headphones, and completely blocks him out. I know you're upset with him, and no, he shouldn't have betrayed your confidence, but look at the come up that you're getting because he did. This is all very Nova and Dr. Robert. I ain't like it when Nova did it, and I don't like it when Nola does it. Y'all are blocking your own blessings. Mars shows up in Nola's house on a pop-up. You know how I feel about pop-ups. He's waiting for Nola to come downstairs. Becky from next door comes outside and sees Papo on her stoop again, and also that her brownstone has been defaced with a G. Ma'am, I totally get why you would be upset about a homeless person sitting on your stoop. You paid good money for that brownstone. Fort Greene is a cleaned up area of Brooklyn. You're not trying to see a homeless man every day. However, to just accuse him of, of defacing your property with no proof whatsoever just because he's homeless is ridiculous. And furthermore, to call the police on him over some graffiti? What kind of 53% is that? The police pull up. I've never in my entire life known police to pull up that fast in Brooklyn. That's how you know that area is gentrified. Bianca tells the police she wants Papo arrested for defacing her property. Out of nowhere, the whole neighborhood shows up and they're like, lady, you sound crazy. Papo is harmless. The police are about to arrest Papo and he goes into like some zone. Can I tell you how scared I was for Papo? Like I thought we were about to have another Radio Raheem situation. I can't take that right now. Thankfully, that's not what happens. Nola steps in. She knows that the police don't really deal that well with mental illness and they don't really deal that well with black men or black people in general. And she was like, you know what? I did it. I defaced the brownstone. I'm responsible for the graffiti. Arrest me. That's going to be an awkward situation with them living next door to each other. The police decide to arrest Nola and Papo. If Nola said she did it, what y'all taking Papo in for? And they're taking Bianca in. Bianca thought she was just going to call the police, cause a huge melee in her community, and was going to sneak back in the house. And the police were like, no, wait, where are you going? You just made a complaint. You're going to come to the station with us. Get in the car. Mars is livid. Like, he's completely freaking out. I'm scared Mars is going to get arrested. Miss Ella had to pipe him all the way down. Mars ain't her kid, but Mars is her son. It's just one of those things that black women, it's just what we do. We protect black men, even sometimes to our own detriment. It's no coincidence that Maxwell's A Woman's Work is playing as Nola goes off to the police station. So often black women, it seems like defending black men is part of the job description. It's one of those add-ons that shouldn't be there. And that's why I get so incensed when guys go in online, going in on black women, I'm like, you got a black mom. You know what the sacrifice of black women is to make you comfortable. And y'all still go on and do that? Nola gets locked up. I'm not sure what happens to Papa. Nola gets a phone call. Of all the people to call, she calls Opal. I kind of get why she didn't call the guys. You just broke up with Mars. I'm not really sure what's going on with Jamie. Greer ain't about that life. But your parents live in Brooklyn and live nearby. Why would you call Opal instead of your family? Opal finally shows up to get Nola. Nola in her paint splattered sweatshirt and her, her paint splattered jeans. She looks like a little kid next to Opal. I always think of Nola as very grown until Opal or Rockaletta Moss are in the scene and you realize then how young and immature that Nola really is. Opal talks to Nola just like she's a kid. You know, you did a very noble thing, but this could have ended very badly for you. She asked why Nola called her and not one of the guys. Nola says she didn't want to be some damsel in distress with the guys coming to rescue her. But that's exactly what you're doing with Opal. You could have called your parents. You chose to call Opal instead. Opal doesn't have some special skill. She's not a lawyer. You wanted Opal to rescue you. You know, sometimes, and this is a terrible trait that women tend to do. When something really bad happens, you'll call some guy in your life and be like, oh my God, this crazy thing happened. Like, can you come? It's almost like a test to see how much he cares. That's what Nola just did with Opal. Opal's not playing along with Nola's shenanigans. She was like, I've come to get you, but your parents will be taking you home. Jamie's at work when he receives a note from Nola. This fool done returned the $10,000. 10,000 
American U.S. dollars tax-free. I can't believe she did that. Nola's note says that she's very thankful for meeting Jamie and for what he's taught her, but she wants to make it on her own and she needs to lift herself up. Get out of here with this self-righteous mess. That whole, I want to do it on my own, that's some real 20s mess. By the time you're in your mid-30s, you're like, as long as it gets done, what difference does it make? Nola says that she feels the universe is shifting to support her. She did get the grant the $15,000. She throws herself into her art. She feels like she's taking a step forward and the universe is taking a step towards her. And then Spike Lee happens. Nola is in her apartment. She's got her new paintings propped up behind her. One of them has a quote from Audre Lorde, the same one that the stripper and the best man quoted. Nola starts rotating in circles as a Michelle and Dege Ocello song plays. It's a song about faithfulness. I'm like, I don't get it. You're not in a relationship. Who are you expecting to be faithful to you? Is this about being faithful to yourself? Is this from Dr. Jameson's conversation? You felt burdened by these men? Then stop dating them. It's real simple. You're not married to any of these people. You've already told Mars bye. I think you just told Jamie bye. Opal told you bye. Tell Greer bye too. What are you stressed out about when it comes to the men? I get being stressed out about money. I get stressed out about being arrested. I get stressed out about, you know, your future, your professional life. I, I don't know why we needed to watch her rotate for like, I don't know, two minutes. I was an English major. I'm overly analytical by nature on top of that. And I still don't know what was happening, Spike Lee. Take the good with the bad. That is my recap of episode nine. Let me know what you thought about Nola getting arrested, about the Becky next door, about Nola breaking up with Mars. And thank you for tuning in. And thank you for subscribing. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you soon. Bye.